Need and importance of classification. Nature has bestowed on us biological wonders in many forms and diversity in great abundance. Every organism, plant or animal is unique in itself. Every place such as hills, forests, deserts, freshwater bodies, seaside, etc. is rich in flora and fauna. Variety of flora and fauna also varies in different geographical locations. An enormous number of species inhabit the earth. Scientists need to understand the living organisms so that they keep track of all species by classifying them into certain categories. When scientists sort and group living things, they call it classification. They classify living things in groups that are alike in some way. Classification is sorting out of likenesses. Approximately 1.4 million species have been identified and named. Many more millions of species are yet to be discovered. Total number of living species on Earth is approximately between 10 and 100 million. The need of classification. Classification is very important in our life. In general, classification simply means the grouping together of alike things according to common qualities or characteristics. By classifying things into different segments, our life becomes more organized and easy. Let us see two situations and compare them. One situation is where the things are kept organized and the other where they are not. Scientists use classification systems to help them make sense of the world around them. Similarly, it is essential to organize information and objects in other spheres of life. Imagine you go to a library and try to look for a particular book. Here is the scenario. May I have a book on rose plant, please? Of course, just go over there. Where? To those shelves, boy. There are hundred shelves. Which one? I am not sure, but I know that we have a book on roses somewhere in the library. How can I find one book in this big library? Another scenario. When you want to search a book on a particular topic or thing, you visit a school library. May I have a book on rose plant, please? Of course. Just go over there. Where? To the shelf which is third on the left side. Are you sure? The book will be there? I am sure. There are three, four books on roses kept on the shelf marked as books on plants. Thank you very much. It would be easy for me to get the book. Library is one common organization that adopts classification. In library, usually books are arranged in general sections such as English, plants, animals, business, sports, etc. and so on. 
such an arrangement helps a reader who comes to search for a particular book. For example, Nomi wanted to read some information on Rose. He looked for the book on the shelf having books on plants. It is simply because Nomi knew that Rose is classified as a plant and librarian guided him towards the shelf pertaining to plant section. Classification in context to living things is also very important since it helps us to understand the living world in a better way. Carolus Linnaeus was a Swedish biologist and is considered as a pioneer in the field of taxonomy. He made an attempt to classify living organisms into two kingdoms, the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. He divided each of these kingdoms into smaller groups called classes. Each class was split into orders. Each order was divided into genera and each genus into many species. Each of these groups was formed on the basis of certain specific morphological features. He described about 5,000 species of plants in his famous book, Genera Plantarum. Similarly, he listed about 4,300 species of animals. He published his scheme of natural classification in the book Systema Naturae. His system of classification provided a firm basis for modern taxonomy. This system of classification is used even today with some additions and modifications. The biodiversity that we see today is the result of millions of years of organic evolution. Since the appearance of life on our planet, many species have become extinct. Newer forms keep on appearing, resulting in a great diversity. It is essential to classify these organisms in a manner by which we can easily identify them. It is necessary to study the individual organisms on their individual level as well as in relation to other organisms in nature. Classification is also needed to distinguish among various organisms and to facilitate communication with other biologists. As new things are constantly being discovered, scientists are trying to figure out to which division each new living thing belongs. The Importance of Classification Classification is a man-made system for the orderly storage and retrieval of data about living world. All members of the living world have to have a name and preferably an allotted place in the huge spectrum of classification. The data entered while classifying living organisms can be used in several ways. It clearly helps in identifying species, studying and conserving species, targeting conservation efforts. Uses and Importance of Classification Study of the enormous biodiversity is made easy by using the data collected during classification of living organisms. 
all forms of life can be scanned at a glance as we have an inventory of all living organisms data. The interrelationship among different groups of organisms is better understood with the help of a classification system. It helps to establish natural relationship among organisms. It forms the foundation for the development of other biological sciences as well. The study of animal behavior is not possible without proper identification and classification. The classification of organisms is important because it gives scientists a method of communication that is universal when referring to different organisms. A single word is able to sum up all the details needed on an organism and its natural habits and needs. The classification of organisms also helps scientists to organize the information they have. Basis of Classification Linnaeus grouped living organisms on the basis of phylogeny. Phylogeny means evolutionary history. Biologists believe that all organisms on the earth are generally related and the genetic relationships of living things can be studied by phylogeny. Phylogeny of organisms implies that different species arise from previous forms. Organisms have evolved through the ages from ancestral forms into more derived forms. This fact becomes the basis of studies while classifying any organism. The process of naming an organism is a highly organized system consisting of establishing genetic relationship between organisms and identifying evolutionary trends among them. The science of classifying and naming the organisms is known as taxonomy. The biologists who specialize in classification are called taxonomists. The scientific study of biological diversity and its evolutionary history is called systematic. The Hierarchy of Classification Dealing with a complex world requires an ability to recognize similarities and differences among objects. Classification systems help to solve this problem. We always see that the scientists put organisms into groups when they have things in common. The first groups they use are the kingdoms. All forms of life present on the earth are divided into five kingdoms. Animal kingdom, plant kingdom, fungi kingdom, protista kingdom, monera kingdom. Organisms having small, simple, single prokaryotic cell-like bacteria, blue-green algae, come under this kingdom. The kingdom comprises of protozoans and algae of various types having large, single, eukaryotic cell-forming chains or colonies. Fungi Moles, mushrooms, yeast, and smuts 
are included in this group. Plant kingdom comprises of mosses, ferns, all woody and non-woody plants. All animals starting from sponges to worms, insects, amphibians, fishes, reptiles, birds and mammals come in the animal kingdom. Classification of living things is called taxonomy. Taxonomy deals in the classification of organisms in an ordered system that indicates their natural relationships. Each kingdom is then split into smaller groups called phyla. Each phylum is split into smaller groups called classes. Each class is split into orders. Each order is split into families. Each family is split into genera and each genus is split into species. A species is a single organism, not a group. All seven hierarchical steps go in order from largest to smallest like this. Kingdom, Phylum, Class, Order, Family, Genus, Species. Kingdom is the largest unit of classification whereas the fundamental unit of life on earth is the species. Today, we will learn about how living things are classified in an hierarchical manner. Kingdom All living organisms are first placed into different kingdoms. Kingdoms are huge groups encompassing million kinds of organisms. All animals are put into kingdom animalia. Plantae, as the name indicates, consists of all plants. Mushrooms, mold, yeast, etc. are classified as fungi. All different kinds of bacteria are put in monera. Protista consists of protists which are single-celled creatures invisible to the human eye. So each of these five major groups is known as kingdom. Let us concentrate on kingdom animalia to learn next hierarchical steps. Phylum down to each kingdom, living organisms are classified into six hierarchical levels. Phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. There are several phyla within each kingdom. The phyla help in dividing a kingdom into smaller and more recognizable groups. For example, Kingdom Animalia is divided into Phylum Porifera, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Annelida, and Echinodermata and many more. Let us focus on one phylum of this kingdom, say Chordata. This phylum contains all animals with backbones like fish, birds, mammals, reptiles and amphibians. Class The next category that makes up a phylum is the class. For example, the phylum Chordata is divided into several classes including aves, Reptilia, Amphibia, Mammalia and several others. Order. Let us concentrate on one of its class. Mammalia. 
Each class is made up of one or more orders. Mammalia can be broken down into orders like Rodentia, Primates, Chiroptera, Insectivora, Carnivora, Perisodactyla, Archaeodactyla, and many more. Family An order is broken down into families. The order Carnivora of class Mammalia is divided into several families, like family Canidae having dogs, family Felidae having cats, family Ursidae having bears, Hynidae having hyenas and wolves, Musletidae comprising of weasels, wolverines and many more. Genus Every animal family is further divided into small groups known as genus. Each genus contains animals that have very similar features and are closely related. For example, the Felidae, that is cat family, contains genus including Felis, that is small cats and domestic cats. Panthera, that is tigers, leopards, jaguars and lions. And Puma, that is panthers and cougars. Finally, a genus is broken down into some species. Species Species are the smallest groups. A species consists of all the animals of the same type who are able to breed and produce young of the same kind. For example, any two great white sharks are of the same species. A genus is always broken down into some species. The genus Panthera includes species Leo and Tigris. Note, that the genus is placed in front of the species while writing the scientific names of animals. Let us see how lion is classified in this world of animals. Lion belongs to kingdom Animalia that includes all animals. It has vertebral column so it belongs to phylum Chordata that includes all vertebrate animals. The animal gives birth to young ones and has mammary glands to feed young ones, so belongs to class Mammalia that includes all mammals. Among all mammals, lion comes under order Carnivora as it feeds on other animals. Order Carnivora has several families, but the lion falls in family Felidae that covers all cats. All great roaring cats fall in genus Panthera, means this genus contains lions, tigers, jaguars and leopards, but species for lions is Leo. As the Linian binomial system gives two words named to each organism, lion's name is Panthera Leo. First word represents a genus and second word represents its species. Kingdom is the largest unit of classification and contains the largest number of organisms. It is divided into smaller units called phyla. Each phylum is divided into classes, each class into orders, each order into families, each family into genera, and each genus into species. The number of organisms in each unit decreases from kingdom to species.